In today's video, we're gonna talk about three settings in Microsoft 365 that can vastly increase your email security. And worryingly, most companies who I come across are only using one. Now stay behind to the end because I'm gonna give you a full demo on how to implement these settings into your Microsoft 365. Before we start, just a quick intro. My name is Jonathan Edwards from a company called Integral IT. We help businesses all over the world with the Microsoft 365 and the cybersecurity. Now it's no secret that the majority of cyber attacks actually originate from email. And it doesn't surprise me because so many people don't set up their email correctly. And that is what today's video is all about. We're gonna go through three settings that you can implement free of charge in Microsoft 365 that will increase the security of your email. Now, throughout this video, I just want you to keep this analogy in mind. You write a letter, you put it into an envelope, and you put it into a post box. I know it seems a bit old fashioned, but it's a really good way to understand what I'm about to show you. Now, the first setting is called SPF. That stands for Sender Policy Framework. The name isn't really important. By adding an SPF record to your domain, you're essentially telling people what email system that you're using. So pretend I've got an email address, which is jonathan at bearded365guy.com. And for my email, I'm using Microsoft 365. I will go onto my domain record for bearded365guy.com and I would add Microsoft 365 as my SPF record. I'll start sending email. And when I send an email to someone, their email server will look at where my email has come from. In this case, it's come from Microsoft 365. It will then perform a quick check, a quick SPF check. And it'll say, where is this email supposed to come from? And the answer is Microsoft 365. So because there's a match, my email will pass the SPF. So this is where we can start talking about that letter analogy. I've wrote a letter and I've put it into an envelope and I've posted it to someone else. When they receive that letter, they can look on the back at the from address and they can see it's from me. That's a little bit like SPF. Now SPF is where most businesses usually stop. They implement it, but they ignore the other two security settings. So what are the other two security settings? The next security setting is called DKIM, and that stands for Domain Keys Identified Mail. But we don't need to remember that. So I've sent that letter to someone and someone's received it. And my name is on the front box on the back. They know that envelope is from me. But what about the contents? What about the letter inside? How do they know that someone hasn't tampered with my letter inside the envelope? Well, this is where DKIM comes into play. DKIM uses digital signatures. And if those digital signatures are verified, it means the contents of that letter or the contents of the email haven't been tampered with. So SPF and DKIM work really well together. With SPF, we know that the envelope has come from me. And with the addition of DKIM, we know the contents of that email or the contents of that letter haven't been tampered with. Well, how do we go a step further? Well, we implement the third security setting. That is called DMARC. So for DMARC, you need to have SPF and DKIM already configured. So what is DMARC? What is the analogy here? So you've sent a letter in the post. It's arrived at its destination. Now the person who receives that letter before they open it, they give you a call. Hi, I've got your letter, but it's got no from address on the back and it might have been tampered with. What should I do with it? Hmm, if it's got no from on the address, I would, it, it might not even be from me. So why you just throw it in the bin? So DMARC is a security setting that you can put on your email system. It tells recipient email servers what to do with email that perpetrates from being from you if it has no DKIM or SPF record attached. So for example, you could set it so if an email arrives at a recipient email server without a DKIM record, it should be rejected. This is a really professional way to set up your email system. You're showing the world that you take security really seriously. So there's a theory on SPF 
DKIM and DMARC. What I'm going to do now is jump on that computer behind me and give you a demo. Now a word of caution here, I'm going to be playing with DNS records. So don't jump in and do this on your own domain without due diligence first because you could stop email from working and we don't want that. So the first setting we're going to talk about today is SPF. Now to configure that, you're going to need access to a few things. Firstly, you need access to the Microsoft 365 Global Admin. Now you can tell that my account has admin rights here because I've got a little admin tab. So I can launch that. Now this is just a test tenant that I use for videos and things like that. Now if I go down to show all and we go to settings and then we talk about domains. Now I've also got a test domain. It's called integral2it.co.uk. It's just a test domain. As its status, you can see it says incomplete setup. The next thing you need access to at the same time is the DNS record for this domain. So you can see I've got it here with the 123 reg. You can see manage DNS for this domain. Now these are all the DNS records. Okay, now if I look at this domain and there's an online tool called mxtoolbox.com SPF, this is an SPF checker. So what you can do is simply type in a domain. So it can be integral to it.co.uk and it can do an SPF lookup and you can see that has failed. So we know this doesn't have an SPF record in place. Okay, so what we need to do if we go back to here and domains, we click on the domain and then we click on continue setup. And Microsoft is going to take us through the setup of adding the domain to Microsoft 365 and crucially making sure it's done correctly okay so we click on continue and then the screen where we add dns records so we can scroll down here it's wanting three records so if i if i just expand these it's wanting an mx record that is for email deliverability it's wanting a c name which is for things like out of office and then this one here is the spf so microsoft is saying i want that in place if we could click on continue, Microsoft will then perform a check on that DNS record to see what's in place. If we then scroll down, we can see we've got some green ticks here. That means that record is in place. We've got a tick there, but we've got an exclamation mark here. That is Microsoft telling us that this SPF is not in place. So what we do is it's asking us to create a TXT record. So we go back to here and all DNS registrars will be different, but it's the same kind of thing. So the type of record is not a C name, it's a TXT slash SPF, so we click that. Then it's wanting a host name, so if we go back here, it basically tells us what to do. So the name is this one here, it's the at sign, we can either type at or just click on there and it will copy. And we'll just paste that into there. And then the destination, if we go back to here, is this one here. So we click on copy because I don't want to type that out. And then we go back onto here and we click add. So that has been added to the domain record. Now what we can do is we can wait a few minutes. This, can, this process can take hours, it can take seconds. What I'll do now is just click on continue to see if it's worked straight away. There you go, it has. It's all worked nicely. So I'll click on done. And just go back to domains and you can see here now my domain is healthy so microsoft has checked all the records check the spf and it's happy that those are in place just to confirm that if i go back to here let's just do an spf lookup again and you can see we've got a nice green box now so that is all in place that is how you do the spf side that is the easy bit the next record we're going to set up is the DKIM. So again, we go back to the admin portal here. We now go to the admin centers and we go to security. Okay. Once we're in here, we want to scroll down to email and collaboration, which is here, and then policies and rules. We then want to choose threat policies. And then under rules, you can see email authentication settings. So we'll click on that. And at the top, there's ARC and there's DKIM. So we're wanting DKIM. And you can see my domain is here. So I'm just going to select this domain here. 
And at the moment it says no DKIMs have been saved for this domain. So we simply click on here, create DKIMs. And now we have the entries that we need. So what we do now, we've got a host name and we've got a points too. So we want to keep that on there. I'm going to copy that. And it might be easy if I just put this into a, a notepad, okay? Launch the notepad and here we go. So I'm going to highlight the host name here like this. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my DNS. The next type is a C name and we're going to copy that into the host name. So it's selector one domain key and go back to my notepad again. And then the address is this one here. OK, so we'll just highlight that again. We'll copy it and we'll put that into destination and we'll click add. OK, that's added. So we go back to my text document again. The next one is here. Click on host name, click on destination. Copy the selector to put that in there and then click on add. So again, it can take a few seconds. It can take longer. So now we've added those, let's click on this disabled toggle here. And then what Microsoft will do is just check, check those CNAME records we've created. Now you can see it's generated an error. That means Microsoft at the moment can't see these two CNAME records. So what I'll do, I'll click on OK. I'll pause the video and I'll come back to it in about five minutes. OK, so I've waited a few minutes. Let's go back into the domain now. We'll toggle this on to enabled. And you can see that that has now enabled, so we can click on OK. So that's an enabled state. So now at the bottom, you can see a little button saying rotate DKIM keys. So how DKIM works, it works with public and private encryption keys. So the recommended approach is that at least every six months, you will come in here and you will rotate those encryption keys. That's all you have to do. What that does is that just recreates the private key. So it's good for security. Equally, if you have a bit of a, a cyber attack or if you have a breach, then come in here immediately and rotate those keys. But for now, for me, that is DKIM all configured for our use. So the third and final setting is called DMARC. Now you can't have DMARC without SPF and DKIM, but once you've got these in place, you can move on to DMARC. So I've got another little text document open here. Again, DMARC can sound quite complicated, but it doesn't have to. So we've got to put another DNS record on our domain. So here are some options, okay? So firstly, we've got DMARC domain. So I can change this to my domain. So that would be integral to it.co.uk. The TTL, the time to live, will always be an hour in seconds. So that's three, 600. But the important bit is this here, okay? So what we're saying here, the P here stands for policy. So at the moment, it's saying none. So if I added this to my domain, what I'm telling recipient mail servers is if you get an, an email from us that is missing an SPF or a DKIM, do nothing, okay? So this is the recommended approach if you're just getting started with DMARC and you're just using it for testing. Use a policy of none. The PCT is a percentage of emails. So what we're saying is for 100% of our emails, please don't do anything. And you can see down here, we we'll change the domain here again. So I'll just copy that into here and copy that onto the domain. The other policies, let's do it in its entirety. It's all nice and neat. The other policies here, we've got a policy of quarantine. So we're saying to recipient mail servers, if you get an email without DKIM or SPF, please quarantine the email. And the final one is reject it. So it's recommended you do it in this order. Start with a no policy, monitor it, then go into quarantine, and then maybe go into reject. There's also a fourth one here. You can see that again, the policy is none, but it's now got an email address, okay? So what this is saying is every day, please send an email, like a security analyst email, to th this email address, okay? So what you will get if you're monitoring this domain is you will get some kind of security reporting to find out what is happening with DMARC. Now, this presumes, assumes that you're managing DMARC right from 365, which is fine. 
So, but what you've got to do is put the right DNS entry in. So what I'm going to put in here, I'm going to change this email address, okay? And I'm going to make this a, we'll call it service desk at integral to it.co.uk. So reports will be sent to this email address, okay? This could be a service desk. It could be a cybersecurity analyst within your business. Also, the policy at the moment is set to none. So I would just set this at reject. Um, it's not advisable to start with reject. Is it advisable to start with none? But this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, what we need is this bit here, the underscore D mark. We go back to our DNS. We want an SPF. We put that as the host name. And then in destination, we copy this. It's this bit here. So it's the ears and everything in between. We copy that and we paste that into here. Once that DNS entry has been added, we just need to wait five or 10 minutes for it to kick in. So I'll just pause the video and I'll pop back shortly. Okay, I've given that a few minutes. Now there's a couple of tools that I can use online to test that our DMARC is in place and working. There's the old mxtoolbox.com, which is very good for things. If I just type in there our domain uh, and click on DMARC lookup, you can see everything is in place there. There's also another tool that I want to talk to you about uh, that is called Valley Mail. Now, this links nicely with Microsoft 365. I'll talk about it more in a minute, but that's also got a like a, a DMARC checker. So again, if I plug my domain into here and click check domain, you can see that we are protected. So that's how you do DMARC. Now, just a little bit about Valley Mail. It's a third party tool and you can use it to manage your DMARC. So it's really quite helpful. If you just go on to here, you can see, for example, you, you would load all your domains into here. And then what you would do is go into settings. And what you can do is create various alerts. So you've got some alerts here. Uh, if a new service is detected, if there's suspicious sending, you can click on there, look, add a custom alert. And what you can do is you can get the weekly alerts, you can get the daily alerts. So it's just a third party tool, Valley Mail. It's very good, especially if you're managing multiple Microsoft 365 tenants. So that is it. That is SPF, that is DKIM, and that is DMARC. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you see the value of SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. And they're all free of charge. So get implementing them today. I look forward to seeing you again soon.